light, 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 light. 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 It plays a powerful role in our lives. Light. A regulator. An implementer. A motivator. Light. Influences our moods. Shapes our perceptions. Light. Can tie elements of an office environment into a pleasing aesthetic whole. And it can enable better performance because lighting designed for task-related visual comfort enhances the productivity of people and the marketability of office space. You can add value to office space with lighting that's appropriate for modern office life. Quality lighting for the competitive edge. Today and tomorrow. Whether you design, own, or occupy office space, lighting can give you the competitive edge. In terms of energy efficiency, office productivity, and a visually pleasing work environment. Welcome to the winning dimension of light and our Lighting the Competitive Office Seminar. I'm Hank Williams, and this is Lighting the Competitive Office. For the next 20 minutes, I'll be your narrator as we examine the many values of proper lighting in the office environment. And we'll do it by showing you those values so that you'll be able to recognize good and bad office lighting when you see it. We will show you a lot, we will tell you a lot, but if only two points register during this presentation, we hope they are, one, that good lighting does not have to cost any more than mediocre lighting, and two, that good lighting is worth far more than it costs. Well, it's almost 8 o'clock in our office. Time to get to work. I always get in a little early. Makes a good impression on my employees. Besides, I'm uh, waiting for Diana to bring me her recommendations on ways to improve employee productivity, at little or no cost, of course. I don't need any more of these, thank you. With every one of them, they should supply an eye doctor. Good morning, Bob. Oh, good morning, Diana. A typical office, kind of a dull, drab environment, bland-looking people. Did you say something? No, I thought you did. Well, it doesn't matter. Are those your productivity recommendations? Yes. Can we go over these now? The people and the environment do look bland and washed out in typical offices. That's because the conventional approach to lighting an office is to spread indiscriminately a blanket of foot candles uniformly over the space. And usually this generalized wash of foot candles also floods the office with uncontrolled light. That is, light that glares in the eyes and reflects in the equipment. All of this is the result of a focus on foot candles instead of people, as if light meters were going to occupy and work in this space instead of human beings. Why has it been this way? Because uniform foot candles are easy to design, install, and put into a specification or lease. That's why you hear so much about delivering a quantity of foot candles throughout a space. Also, foot candles are lumens per square foot and relate directly then to the dollars per square foot spent on light. But it may not be at all necessary to have the same amount of lighting throughout the office space. All of our departments have the same lighting, but people are doing different kinds of work. Some could have too much light, others too little, and the ceiling is just a vast sea of bright fixtures. This uniform and uncontrolled lighting is not the kind of lighting that appeals to the new breed of knowledgeable designers, owner occupiers, and tenants. Lighting refinement is needed that will provide both the necessary quantity of light and the controlled direction of light. Equal lighting across an entire floor means that a telephone sales area, for instance, would be lighted the same as a drafting area. Two completely different visual needs are treated the same. And if it's done with uncontrolled light, it means glare for everybody. If people look bad, they may feel bad. 
You can't expect them to do good work, can you? What do you mean? I mean, look at us. We look washed out, unhealthy. Speak for yourself. I feel fine. But there's no color, no life in here. Wait a minute. I chose these colors. And the lights are glaring. See so much glare everywhere. What she means is visual comfort. Oh, thank you. Visual comfort is not a luxury. It is the absence of glare. And the absence of glare is an absolute necessity. People should have the light they need to carry out their work. That's reasonable. And this is what you've spent the last week researching? The point is, we should provide both the proper quantity and quality of light for particular work so that people can perform a variety of tasks involved in their everyday work. As far as quantity is concerned, not all tasks should have the same light level. We could probably increase productivity if we accurately target the lighting to the task. Quantity and quality of light. Now, what that really means is the proper distribution of light into the space. To form a more productive environment by enriching human performance. The first consideration is the quantity needed for each task. If you provide more light than you need for a task, you're wasting energy dollars. So don't over-design. If you provide less light than you need, you're wasting human energy. So don't under-design. And uh, who is the magician I call to perform this uh, design balancing act? The right design isn't the result of magic or artistic intuition or guesswork. The Illuminating Engineering Society has developed a comprehensive method for determining the lighting levels appropriate to a variety of office tasks. Illumination levels depend on the difficulty of the seeing task, the importance of the work, and the age of the office worker performing the task. Easy tasks, such as well-printed large type, require very little light, possibly as little as 20 foot candles if reading speed and accuracy are not important and if young eyes are involved. But difficult tasks, such as reading light pencil writing or poor copies, can require anywhere from 100 to 200 foot candles, again, depending on the importance of speed and accuracy and the age of the workers. So what you're telling me is that good lighting is good business. That's right. And the beauty of it is quality lighting, skillfully designed and energy efficient lighting, doesn't have to cost more than what we've got right now. Now you're trying to tell me that quality is free? Why don't you explain it to him? Compared to poor or mediocre lighting, quality office lighting will cost very little more. In fact, it could cost less if you also incorporate the newer energy-saving lighting products and techniques. And you further enhance your lighting investment by calling on an experienced lighting designer to ensure that you have both effective lighting and low-cost lighting. Let's address the cost issue. Lighting, a very small cost of the office enterprise. To operate a typical office, let's say the total annual cost is $177 per square foot. Of that total, we'll allocate $140 for wages and salaries. The cost of space? Make it $20 per square foot. Office services such as telephone and supplies? $9. Furniture and equipment? We'll use $8. The cost of typical lighting is 90 cents per square foot which is one half of one percent of the total cost of the office operation. And quality lighting is a small but great investment in improved productivity. And if it also reduces energy consumption, it will realize a net savings. A more competitive office doesn't have to cost even a penny more per square foot. Look at it in terms of people comfort. What's the cost of heating, ventilation, and air conditioning in today's office? On average, about $1 per square foot per year. Comfort is the only reason we pay that $1.
We pay less than that just for basic, typical lighting that is not comfortable. The additional cost to provide visual comfort is a very small increment. And yet it can do what thermal comfort does, foster productivity. Why does better quality cost so little? The annual cost of owning light fixtures is less than 8% of the total cost of light, and the annual cost of fluorescent tubes is only about 2%. Improved fixtures and lamps cost very little more, but produce big visual effects. The cost of electricity, by the way, is about 70% of the total owning and operating cost of a lighting system. That's why the new energy-saving lamps and ballasts are always more worthwhile than the standard versions. Smart lighting for the modern office is a strong competitive value. For a very small investment, intelligently designed lighting in some cases will yield a net saving from energy reduction. Lighting for the competitive office pays off. Now let's start to put some thought and finesse into lighting for the competitive office. Let's light it for people and their human tasks, not light meters and their clinical readings. Well, what can we do to transform a harsh, colorless, unfriendly space into a pleasant, warm, and productive office environment? Plenty. We'll begin with some things you can do incrementally at modest and perhaps no additional cost. Let's start with color. There's no reason in today's offices to have poor color rendering, even with fluorescent lighting. Now, color is subjective and therefore difficult to describe, but there are two ways to quantify the color appearance that a lighting system will produce. First, chromaticity, that is, visual warmth or coolness, which is measured in kelvins. And CRI, Color Rendering Index, a scale from 0 to 100 that is a general indicator of a light source's ability to render colors in a natural and normal way. A CRI of 70 and above is quite good. In the past, deluxe fluorescents with high CRIs dropped one-third in efficiency compared with standard colors. Now, with the development of newer fluorescent phosphors, we can have the best of both worlds, good color and high light output. Here was the bland office lighting we had. Now let's switch to better color, a CRI of 73 and a warmer 3500 kelvins with SP35 fluorescence. Want to see that again? Conventional cool white fluorescence. Look at their complexions and the fabrics and the chairs. We'll switch back to SP35 color and watch them come to life. Oh, a definite improvement. That's a pretty outfit you're wearing, Diana. I just noticed it. The reason the colors look livelier and that they both look healthier is the SP35 fluorescent lamps, which improve the appearance of complexions and most colors without the overall blue-green cast produced by the cool white lamps, both a warmer chromaticity and a better CRI than cool white. Color, the easiest, least cost enhancement of the office environment. Okay, you made me look better. Now can you help me see better? How about the glare on my CRT? A light source can produce glare in a CRT because its reflection is brighter than the information on the screen. And the fixture will also glare directly into the eyes. This is because we see more than we look at directly due to our peripheral vision and eye movement. This direct glare creates a sensation of too much light. You saw the fixture brightness reflected in the CRT, and you saw that same brightness directly as glare. In most cases, it's not a matter of too much light, but of misdirected light from excessively bright fixtures or from windows that aren't properly shielded. 
Generally, you want to protect eyes from the direct glare of light fixtures with shielding in a zone of 45 degrees from the horizontal. That's the glare zone. Why don't you both come over here and I'll show you what I mean. We've eliminated the brightness from the ceiling with parabolic shielding. Glare's gone from the CRT. Glare's gone from the lighting system. It's more comfortable, isn't it? And there's a system for identifying and predicting visual comfort. It's called VCP, Visual Comfort Probability. The VCP table is very simple to use. Just see what the VCP number is for your room size and look for a VCP of 70 or above. This is what you need to prevent glare. Even though it is easy to use, the VCP system takes many factors into account, including the brightness of the fixture, the number of fixtures, the angle of view, and the room size. To ensure visual comfort, just ask any fixture manufacturer for a VCP table. There's more to lighting than getting the right amount of light to the work surface. Maybe this is functional, perhaps even comfortable, but I don't like it. The walls have gone dark. Can't we do something about that? There is something we can do. What we want is wall and accent lighting to create a balance of brightness levels and a more pleasing appearance. While we need some variation to avoid a dull environment, Brightness extremes, either too bright or too dark, can cause visual discomfort. For a more comfortable background brightness, we'll add fluorescent wall lighting. Just a simple cornice board with a fluorescent strip behind it. You uh, forgot the picture. I saved that for this. We're using a two inch 12 volt reflector lamp with a tiny but powerful quartz bulb. It's the precise lamp, which focuses a precise beam of light exactly where you want it. What about the actual work, lighting the tasks that need to be done? Do we really need all those fixtures in the ceiling when the work is done down here? No, we don't. Since the task is the only place we really care about foot candles, let's put those foot candles on the task, but without lighting up the whole space. With that in mind, we'll take a fresh look at our office lighting. Let's start over. The task lighting in this office is being done with low wattage biax lamps. Their compactness permits good optical control for placing light where it is needed within restricted areas, without reflections and without shadows. A standard four-foot lamp is used in this office. In this case, the lamp has special shielding to reduce reflections in the task. Obviously, we need some general lighting. For visual comfort, the general ambient lighting should be between a third and a half the task lighting. For instance, if the task is lighted to 100 foot candles, the ambient lighting should be between 33 and 50 foot candles. For that general lighting, we'll use the high lumen biax fluorescence in a special indirect fixture mounted on the binder bins and on the stand at the end of the table. The compact size and powerful light output of the biaxial fluorescence means that its light can be efficiently captured by these low profile fixtures that project light uniformly across even a low ceiling. This avoids the problem of spotty ceiling brightness that sometimes results with indirect lighting. Indirect lighting can be very pleasing, but it's not the only way to provide the ambient lighting in a task lighted office. Oh, I'm sorry, Diana, I left you in the dark. There. But with the localized task lighting, perhaps this is more ambient lighting than you need. Do you see those switches? Just switch down from three lamps per fixture to two or one to the level of ambient lighting that's comfortable. This new highly efficient T8 fluorescent system in the parabolic fixtures 
consumes only two-thirds of the electricity, but produces the same light output as standard fluorescent lamps and ballasts. Now we see how individual task lighting and individualized control of the ambient lighting can give people control over their own visual environment, a far cry from the uniform, industrialized type of office we're all accustomed to. Hey, how about our wall and accent lighting? Do we give that up with task and ambient lighting? No. In fact, accent lighting can provide some of the ambient lighting that we now need. Well, there you are, Diana and Bob. Comfortable, productive, and energy efficient lighting for the competitive office. Let's recall how we got there. SP35 fluorescence for warm natural colors. Parabolic louvers for minimum glare. Wall and accent lighting from carefully placed fluorescence and precise quartz line reflector lamps. Low wattage biax fluorescent lamps in task lighting fixtures to light the work surfaces. 39 watt high lumen biax fluorescent lamps in optically controlled fixtures for pleasant indirect lighting. The highly efficient T8 fluorescent system. Well, Bob, I think that pretty well supports everything in my productivity reports. Now, what do you think is next in office lighting? We're working toward the perfect office environment, the office of the future. And we're steadily approaching it with new technologies such as the Trimline T8 system with electronic ballasts, the Biax fluorescence, and here, a 32 watt metal halide lamp that will eventually replace incandescent lamps for downlights. A quantum leap in efficiency, it uses only one fourth the wattage for an equal amount of light. But you mentioned perfect office lighting. I can't imagine what that would look like. You don't have to. Here it is. We have an ample amount of light, a comfortable balance of task and background brightness, and very pleasant visual surroundings. Do you think we'll ever get there? Look how far we've come in just 20 minutes. I hope we've helped you, too, helped move you toward a more competitive office in your future.